All right, step one accomplished. We have made it out here for the day. It's beautiful out and it's very, very hot. It's already probably in the mid 80s and there is not a cloud in the sky except for that little wispy one. But it's gonna be super hot out and it's gonna get hot out really, really early today. The place that I'm headed to right now is very near and dear to my heart. This particular flat or this whole area is kind of the spot that started it all for me. Uh, about 12 years ago, this was the first flat that I fished here in Mosquito Lagoon and I had a banner day. I got over 10 redfish, many of which were over slot. And that really kind of started my addiction here with uh, inshore saltwater fishing. And I have not been back to this area in oof, four or five years. It's been a long time. It holds a very special place in my heart. I have a mixture of emotions today, but I'm not going out to try to see if today's day lives up to uh, days of yesteryear. Today is more so exploring and seeing if I can apply some of my pre-trip planning techniques onto what I'm gonna encounter today and try to find some success. I don't know if the fish are gonna be holding in the same types of spots. The water is very dirty right now uh, and there's probably not any seagrass. So the patterns that I'm used to, it's probably not what I'm gonna to find today. Um, so I'm still gonna explore, I'm still gonna to try to treat it like any other area, brand new, look for signs of life, look for good ambush points, look for some protection out of the wind. Uh, wind's gonna kick up here out of the east a little bit, so this area is gonna be good to explore. And if nothing else, have a great day on the water. I, I hope I can find some fish, but you know how it is. Sometimes it's just really special to come back to an area that you know very well and is uh, near and dear to your heart, so you can just go and enjoy the experience. I hope we get on a bunch of fish for you guys today and stay tuned. All right, finally made my way here onto the flat. Ah, it's bringing back a bunch of memories. At this point in time, in May and June of years past, I used to come out here, the water would be crystal clear. There'd be 30, 40 tailing redfish all around here. It was absolutely nuts. And while it's not that anymore, I'm sure there's still fish around. I've got a ton of bait fish and I've got what looks like uh, some bigger pushes right there. Um, I'm just gonna be fan casting the Moonwalker for a little while here. The sun's starting to get up relatively high. Um, sun's getting up hot, you know, earlier now that we're kind of making our way into the summer months. So uh, I probably should have gotten out a little bit sooner to capitalize on that topwater bite. But I'll try this for a little while. I'm just gonna fan cast downwind, you know, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, two o'clock. And I'm gonna start working my way down towards these islands. That's kind of the direction the wind is very lightly pushing me and uh, hope that there might be a big red or a trout milling out here with all the bait fish. Uh, the water's a lot higher than normal. We've had some rainstorms, and number one, that's probably contributed to the murky water situation I'm dealing with right now. Um, but historically, when the water levels rise here in the lagoon, I tend to find a lot, a lot of bigger trout in the areas that I was normally finding redfish in years prior. Um, I'm not sure why, uh, they just seem to push up into potholes and little reliefs and tighter to the shoreline, like down there at that island. Uh, I'll have, you know, I had one week where the water was low and it was nothing but redfish, and then a bunch of rain came through the week after, and then the following weekend, I couldn't find any redfish, and it was all trout in the exact same area. Um, so I'm not sure if that's gonna be the same type of pattern today, but if it is, I'm gonna have some ideas of where I can find them. So we'll keep poking along working this moonwalker for a little bit. If we don't get a lot of action, we're gonna switch to subsurface and see if we can figure them out with that. I like this stretch right here. I've got protection, I've got some shade, some structure. I'm gonna throw the moonwalker in here. I feel like that'd be a good bet. Oh my, got him, got him. Is that a trout? It's acting like a trout. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Is it a trout? I think so. No, it's a snook. It's a snook. Okay. Whoa, buddy. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, he spit it. <laughs> Darn, that was cool though. Okay. That's part of the formula. Some shade. Okay, some shade here. Oh, we got another big fish moving out. Let me cast down on that guy. So we got some shade, we got tight to structure. It makes sense that there's gonna be predators in here. I think we just spooked out another big snook. That's what that push was down there. All right, just retied real quickly because that snook frayed up that leader and 
I popped it off pretty quick. I still have 20 pound on. I could switch over to 30 pound, but uh, <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take my chances here. I'm gonna keep on working this moonwalker and hope that uh, fishing tight to the structure like this, keeping it moving, that the snook will pop it and, oh, 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 come on, get him. Oh, get it. Oh my gosh. Oh, did I botch that shot? Got him. N another nice snook. Oh, no, 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 no. Whoa, actually really good snook. Oh, shame on me. Shame on me. All right, 30 pound it is. Oh, darn. Okay, learn my lesson. Learn that lesson. That was a nice snook. We were putting on 30 pound immediately. We are not going to lose another fish like that. I learned a really hard lesson right there. Uh, if you see a snook and you hook a snook and you're rocking 20 pound leader, make a different choice. <laughs> I am so bummed I missed that really nice snook. It's a good thing I have one more moonwalker on me and I've still got a lot of shoreline that's protected. It's a uh, shaded area. It's the sun's rising in the east and I can get up on the on the outside west edge of these islands and I've got some shade. I'm hoping maybe I'll find some more snook like that. These mosquitoes are still following my, me right now. It got crazy. As soon as I got tight to the shoreline, it's like I poked a hornet's nest. They're everywhere. So I'm trying to get some distance between me and the ones that were on that shoreline. Um, didn't bring any bug spray. I didn't think I needed it. I've got lots of thick long sleeve shirts on, but they are getting me through the long sleeves right now. And it's, it's almost unfishable. <laughs> so I'm gonna go try to hit this new section, keep puffing and puffing, get away from these mosquitoes and see if we can't find another snook. All right, I've switched my game plan up a little bit. I finally found a protected area where I'm not getting absolutely assassinated by mosquitoes right now. And um, I'm gonna stand up and try to sight fish some reds. I've seen two or three little ones scoot out, but I can actually make out their silhouette right now. Uh, the water's pretty dirty but they have this neon red coloration to them, so it can be pretty easy to spot them. Hopefully I'll find them kind of zigzagging up tight to the shoreline and all those trees. But if I start spooking them out here, oh, that's, oh, that's a ray right there, that scared me. See, I don't know if you guys can see that here on the screen, but little stingray just kind of floating a foot underneath the surface. That's the same coloration of the redfish that I'm looking for. If I start spooking a lot of fish um, and I definitely can't see them to present, then I'm just gonna sit down and I'm gonna start fan casting here off the shoreline a little bit. They might be kind of staged in this little slough. Uh, it kind of dips out just, could be six inches right here and it's this runway. Oh, nice red just spooked out there. Um, all right, I'm gonna slow down, start getting some casts out and see if we can't get one. At this point in the day, I'm just getting irritable. I mean, I, I miss those two snook first thing. I'm spooking redfish. I've got mosquitoes eating me alive. It's a thousand degrees outside. I just wanted to pack it up and call it a day and head back to the ramp. But I'm so glad that I didn't because I noticed something out the corner of my eye, went over to investigate and could not believe what I found. Ooh, woof. It is like 9.30 in the morning and it's over 90 degrees out right now. It is blistering hot and I am trying to keep my distance, but there are some 40 inch bulls down about my one o'clock right there. I highly doubt you're gonna be able to see them, but they are tailing and they're moving really slow. So they're happy and undisturbed fish. I'm gonna slowly paddle over there and see if I can't present. I've got a Power Prawn original. I've got it in the Slam Shady color and I put a little rattle in the tail. See some movement over there. It's so hot out. There's just no wind, so I have to move extremely slow. If I get one of these fish, it's gonna be a miracle. You see that? Big tail. Oh, big tails. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There they go. There goes the big ones. Oh, I botched that shot. I can't believe it. Oh, he actually ate it! No way! <laughs> oh my gosh! That is a monster! Oh, I gotta, I gotta follow him, I gotta follow him. <gasps> I thought I ruined it. Oh, oh, oh no way! 
<laughs> oh, that is an absolute tank. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna pull me out. Oh, no way. Oh man. Oh, that is an insane red. Oh, I'm shaking right now. I'm shaking. Oh my gosh. This might be potentially my biggest red on artificial. On the power prawn. Power prawn and slam shady color. Whoa, gosh. Oh, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing it. I'll tell you right now, guys, this is not gonna be a netter. This is not a netter. Oh my gosh. I can't. He's a missile. Absolute missile. All right. Here he is, guys. Kind of hard to see, but oh, power prawn's right there. Oh man, come back here. <laughs> oh man, he's starting to get tired now. Oh, really taking my time. I've got a lot of heat on this fish, believe it or not. And I've got 30 pound, which is good. Oh my gosh. This is the biggest red on artificial I've ever caught, hands down. Oh my gosh. Of course I'm getting a call. That's what happens, right? Oh, oh my gosh, come here. Come around this side. I'm gonna have to get him with the lip gripper. I always get a call when I got a fish on. <laughs> Look at this fish. This is insane. I am trying to stay calm and uh, I'm shaking right now. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh, we got him. Oh, he popped out. Oh my God, the prom popped out. The prawn popped out. Oh, oh my gosh, guys. This red. Look at this red. You ready? <laughs> Gotta do this quick. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh man. Look at this red. Oh, I don't even think I can get the whole fish in the frame. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, this is so wild. Monster, monster red. We got to get her back in the water quick, guys. I know she's super tired. I really want to take my time with this fish. Okay. Do you want to go? She's kicking. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Get out of town. Oh man, I'm so pumped. Biggest red on artificial in my life. I'm... <laughs> I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying not to cry. This place, this area is, is where, I, where I got a love for this sport. It's where I fell in love with the lagoon. It's where I fell in love with tailing redfish. And to just, to just be able to come out here and find a bull like that and, and get it tailing on the power prawn, like, oh my gosh, I'm, thank you God. Thank you, God. That's unmistakable. Unmistakable that I was supposed to be here today. Oh, I'm so grateful. What an incredible experience. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna head back to the ramp on an extremely high note. I can't top that. Nope, simply can't top it. I'm sure I could spend some time and beat up some shorelines and catch that snook that I missed earlier or maybe get a nice trout and round out a slam, but you know what? I don't need that. That was the biggest redfish of my life on an artificial lure. I'm over the moon, super happy. I'm gonna get off the water, clean up my gear, get myself a sandwich, and just smile. That's really all I can do. <laughs> Guys, if you wanna learn more about the rigging techniques and what my plan was that went into today to find these fish, it's all about proper planning. That pre-trip plan that I put together this morning to get an idea of what areas I wanna go scout, what do I wanna look for, what lures am I going to use, what are the trends for this time of the year in this area? All those things played into today's success. It's not just going out and fishing and hoping that something bites. It's planning your day, executing it properly, and maximizing your opportunity at success. So if you guys want to catch the biggest redfish of your life or you want to catch your biggest snook or trout or any species you haven't caught or your particular bucket list, you guys got to come join us in our insider club. That's what we're all about. We're going to teach you what tools you need and what to look for to find feeding fish consistently. We're going to help you get geared up with the right tackle. We have courses on every species and every situation for inshore fishing that you guys can think of. So what are you waiting for? Head on over and join us in our insider club.
And if you're new to Salt Strong, we are the best inshore fishing club in America. We teach you how to find and catch all kinds of inshore game fish. You're going to save a ton of money on your fishing tackle, and you're going to meet a bunch of awesome new friends. So if that sounds like something for you, head on over to saltstrong.com, and we will see you in the Insider Family soon.